mistakes we all make when it comes to style. Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Today we're going to talk about some of the mistakes that we all might be making when it comes to style. After all, we are all evolving in our style journey and nobody is immune to mistakes. But some of these mistakes might be costing you both in terms of money and your self-esteem. So if this is something you're interested in, then keep on watching. The first mistake that I notice women making is just shopping, not investing. This is one of the biggest mistakes we can make, not seeing our wardrobe as an investment that will help us achieve our goals. Buying randomly and compulsively only leaves you with a fragmented closet and feeling like you have nothing to wear. The questions you should be asking yourself regarding your closet should be the likes of What am I going to get from these pieces here? Are they truly representing me? Are they making me feel amazing? Are these pieces going to help me get closer to my goals? A promotion? Feeling good about myself? Or even a date? Planning a wardrobe should be a slowly and thoughtful process that we all should do on a regular basis. And whenever we detect a missing piece, we should plan it and budget for it. So, for example, if you detect a need for a blazer, for example, don't come back with a pair of shoes. So when you go out shopping, scan your closet first to detect for possible duplicates. And then ask the silent question, do I really need anything else here? And if so, how much do I have to spend on it? What function will that piece have in my closet? Is it going to elevate it? Is it going to make it more modern? Sales time is when I scored some of my best wins, but it's also when I made my biggest mistakes. It's our instinct and desire to try new things. But moving from this point of desire to purchasing and then actually wearing it isn't a clear path. My mission here is to help you minimize your misses and give you a chance to add smartly to your closet. Shopping with intention means being more mindful about how and why you spend your money on your clothes and other items. It's about putting your money where your mind is and aligning your beliefs and purposes with your shopping habits. Don't get tempted to buy just because it was on sale. The gold question is, would I buy this full price? Remember, a good sale is only as good as how many times you wear the item. When your closet speaks to the core of you, you think of it less in terms of the items you have in it, but rather in terms of the experiences you had when you were wearing the items. The next one is less encompassing, but very important nonetheless, wearing the wrong prints. Prints can be fun, no question about that. Some prints can make you look cheap and dated. Small, low contrast florals can be the worst offenders, like Liberty print or Little House on the Prairie style prints. Why are they aging? Because they are old-fashioned. They are from a time period from the far past. Other prints to be cautious about are funky geometrics or thick horizontal black and white stripes, because this can be quite unflattering. You can never go wrong with classics like vertical thin stripes, polka dots, plates, checks, paisleys. These are timeless and never go out of style. Buying too many one pieces. This is more about strategic planning your wardrobe. Nothing wrong with dresses and jumpsuits and they have a room in our wardrobe. And we normally tend to style them the same way over and over. And that makes them even more limiting. It's much easier to style a skirt and a top, for example, with a mix and matching them with other pieces. And luckily, more and more brands are releasing matching separates that you can mix and match with other pieces. So keep your one pieces to a minimum and not knowing to accessorize. Wearing the exact right amount of accessories can sound easy, but it's easily missed. I'm gonna show you the difference between not accessorizing at all and then when you add the right amount of accessories and when you overdo it. Hopefully I'll make it clear for you. This outfit is okay, but it's arguably missing something. Adding a few small touches like a necklace or a scarf or sunglasses always complete your look. You only need an extra 30 seconds in the morning to add your signature touch to the outfit and elevate it. Opt for timeless, delicate pieces that resemble real jewelry and scarves that have classic prints to them. It's easy to overdo it. You can see in the third look that by adding big earrings, compete with the necklace. Avoid wearing two big statement pieces, especially when they're close together. When in doubt, take one accessory off.
wearing the wrong sunglasses. Anyone who loves fashion knows what a good pair of sunglasses can do for your personal style and your confidence. I almost never leave my apartment without sliding down my nose my favorite pair of sunglasses to complete my outfit. In 2024, say goodbye to petite circular frames and say hello to 2010s oversized frames. Cat eyes, aviators and big frames are back. But with a twist. Don't go thinking that you can wear your 2010 sunglass because it never works. But first, just like our bodies, our face also have distinctive features. By understanding what time of frame best fits your face shape, you can choose the sunglasses that fit you perfectly and enhance your best features. For individuals with brown faces, sunglasses with angular frames can help create the illusion of more defined angles. Opt for styles such as square, rectangle, or geometric frames. These shapes provide contrast to the roundness of your face, adding structure and balance. Oval faces are versatile and suit a wide range of sunglasses styles. Consider frames that are proportionate to your face, neither too small nor too large. Classic styles like aviators, wayfarers and cat eye sunglasses are excellent choices for oval faces. These timeless designs highlight the natural balance of your face shape. Square faces benefit from sunglasses styles that soften the strong angles of the face. Look for frames with rounded or curved edges, such as round, oval, or cat eye shapes. These styles help to counterbalance the squareness of your face, creating a softer look. Heart-shaped faces can be complemented by sunglasses that draw the attention downwards and add width to the lower part of the face. Balance the forehead's width and the chin's narrowness with round or square sunnies. These shapes help to balance out the wider forehead and add definition to the chin area. Diamond faces can be enhanced by sunglasses that emphasize the cheekbones and soften the angles of the face. Look for frames that feature gentle curves and, and oval or cat eye shapes. These styles help to highlight the cheekbones and create a balanced look not doing the high-low way of dressing. For me, there's not such a thing as dressing for one's age. But as we get older, it's extremely important to invest in key pieces that flatter your figure and enhance your sartorial image. The trick to mixing high-end and high street is to find a few key designer pieces. This can serve as pillars to build your outfit upon, as you only need one designer pieces to provide the illusion of a high-end wardrobe. Designer pieces aren't guaranteed of quality, however. A designer piece is only as good as the quality of the high street pieces you wear it with. Obviously, I'm not saying you should have designer pieces, but if you're going to, I suggest you to start with bags and accessories, because they will be the focal point of your outfit. But before investing in a designer item, do your searching in terms of value and quality. So before you buy your high street pieces, check if they have quality to them so they complement your high-end pieces and don't detract from them. Remember the rule when teaming high street and high-end pieces. Opt for complementing colors rather than contrasting colors so you can mix and match those. No wearing the right shoes for your outfit. Once it becomes clear to you that leaning into every whim of trend can come as a cost, and you learn how to describe your personal style, you learn what kind of shoes will help you show that visually. And in every facet of your life, not just when you are on vacation or for a special event. That's when your must-have shoes become the biggest players in your closet. So if you follow these simple rules, it will make you much easier to decide what shoes to wear with each outfit. But first and foremost, shoes are made to be comfortable. That said, there's a fine line between feeling comfortable and looking like a grandma. So staying tuned to what's current at the moment is vital when it comes to shoes, because they are the focal point of your outfit. Then ask these questions when buying shoes. Can I walk in them a lot? Is it a good neutral? Can I wear them in all facets of my life? Or at least the main facets of my life? Work, weekend, and going out. Does it help to balance the proportions of my outfits, either slim or big. Then finally divide your shoes into three categories. The refined ones, the slim neutral, and the cool modern. The refined shoe is the one that adds polish to a casual look. It shouldn't be limited to a special occasion though. So for example, you're wearing a casual look like this for work on a casual Friday. And the easy thought is to pair it with sneakers. 
which is fine on the weekend, not to the office. The shoe adds all the chicness without the attitude, just the right dose of polish. When you really push and try new ways of styling your items, you see your closet expanding right before your eyes. The neutral slim shoe is the one that gives balance to something big or the nice skin when your look has a lot of coverage. The neutral color adds depth to an outfit. This outfit should have been just fine with a black sandal. Fine, but a good strange neutral makes it more. Cool is the opposite of refined. You wear it when you want to take your outfit down a notch. A pencil skirt is a dressy feminine piece. Any other dressy or feminine piece, when paired with a square toed loafer, gives a good friction. The balance here that has all the refinement and prettiness I'm drawn to is fully righted in my zone when paired with a shoe that has a masculine vibe. This is the balance I'm always striving for. Chunky shoes like this look best with fitted or slim silhouettes. Strappy shoes need to be shown. So cropped, midi or short styles look best with them. But be aware that cropped and midi looks shorten your legs when combined with strappy shoes. Thinking of your shoes as tools rather than items allows you to know when to employ them to build the vibe that you're hoping for, not evolving your style. If you look through their decades, it's clear that they have distinctive aesthetics. But it's not that in 1990 we had a completely overhaul from 1989. It slowly evolved and because of this slow pace, sometimes you get stuck in a time. A clear example, if you ask me a couple of years ago if I ever would wear something oversized, I will definitely say no. And now when I see old photos and me wearing my fitted blazers, they look so 2019. Do you see yourself wearing low-rise skinny jeans anytime soon? It's not that they never come back. But for the time being, they're out of the equation. To stay relevant, we have to stay tuned to the current aesthetic. Know that I'm not saying trends. Aesthetics are perennial guidance that lead us to what's current and modern at a given time. Fashion comes in cycle for sure, but they always come with a twist. So it's important to evolve along and pay attention to what we stand for at a given time. Great aesthetics indicators, for example, are shoe toes. So many decades ago, it was round round shoes was all there was, and then it came pointed, square, diamond. In 2024, and perhaps even beyond, we'll be seeing lots of pointy and peep toe styles, as well as kitty heels. So these are the things that dictate how current and how old-fashioned you look. This isn't following trends at all costs. I'm not a trend advocate, but paying attention to little clues here and there make all the difference in the way you put yourself together. So these are some of the mistakes that I noticed some women making. I myself made some of the mistakes. I think it's important to share so we avoid these mistakes moving forward. We may make other mistakes, but at least we're learning in the process. So I really hope you found this informative and if you did, please go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. As usual, I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, a great week, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everyone.